So you want to learn how to place your subject in a 3D environment. Well, in this video, I will share some tips and tricks to do it efficiently and the easiest way I found possible. So make sure to watch the full video and let's get started. Once you are done shooting your video, bring it into After Effects and I will trim this down because this is the part of the video that I need. After that, we will need to roto out our subject. You can use roto brush for that or you can use the mask tool. Using the roto brush takes less time but it's not as precise. As you can see the edges are not clean and there's a lot of flickering. To fix that we can go to the roto brush settings and change the shift edge to minus 20 or 50 something depending on your roto. After that check the decontaminate edge colors and you can increase the radius to 5 or something like that. When we do this the flickering will go away but this is not the best way to do it. If you are working on a personal project this is completely fine but if you are working on your portfolio or a professional project you have to do this right and for that i will use the mask tool so the best way to rotate your subject with the mask tool is to do it limb by limb so for example i will create a mask for my left foot and then i will change the mask mode to none and turn on the keyframes and i will do this for all of the frames this will take much more time but it will be precise and it will look good in the end details matter so once you are done masking out your subject you can export it out as a PNG sequence and make sure to turn on the alpha for it. I will also export the footage without the mask because I don't want to trim it down again in Blender. So I will just use this. Open up Blender, select VFX. And now open up your footage. Select set scene frames and prefetch. Now go to the render properties and under color management, change the view transform to standard if it's not. Now let's start tracking. You can hold control on your keyboard and left click to select a point in your footage you want to track. If you want to delete that, select the tracker and press X on your keyboard to delete it. Let's change this to perspective and select normalize. Now press E on your keyboard, drag to the right. Now if your tracker stops for some reason in the middle, you can go to that point in the video and manually fix it. Press E on your keyboard and then drag it again. It should work fine. Now let's track another point. Blender needs at least 8 good tracking points to solve your camera. So let's track a few more points, okay? Some of the trackers will need babysitting. But if they don't work, you can go ahead and delete them and try a different spot. Once you're done with the tracking, go to the solve tab, check this keyframe and also check the refine options right here. And now you can click on solve camera motion. We got a solve error of 0.4 pixels, which is very good. Now I will click set up tracking scene and set as background. Now I will select this one point and make it the origin. Now select three points on your ground, click on floor. Now come up here, click on this plus icon, go to general and layout. Go up to the viewport overlays option and turn on motion tracking. And now you can see where the track points are. I'm gonna go into the camera view and see everything's right. I will make the ground plane a little bit bigger. Now select your camera and go to the camera settings. If the shift X and Y are not zero, make sure they are zero. Now press shift A on your keyboard and import your roto layer as planes. While your roto layer is selected, shift select the camera, control C on your keyboard to copy location and control C then copy rotation. If this isn't showing up for you, you have to turn on the copy attributes add-on. While the roto layer is selected, go to edit mode and then go into the camera view. Press G on your keyboard, then ZZ to move it backwards and match it perfectly with the camera. Now I will create a new plane because the plane Blender created for the floor doesn't have any materials and I don't know how to fix that. So I'll just create a new plane. Now select your roto layer, shift select the camera, control P on your keyboard to parent the roto layer to the camera. Now if your video is not moving, go into the shader editor, change this from single image to image sequence and turn up the frames. Now turn on auto keying, go into the camera view, select your roto layer and scale it up or down until your feet barely touches the ground so that the shadow makes sense. When you do this, your subject will be moving in the 3D space just like how he was in the video. And now I will make the environment. This is not a tutorial on how to make 3D environments. If you want a tutorial on that, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I uploaded this plan file to my Patreon. So if you want this environment for yourself and help me out at the same time, download it from there. Now this is very important. When you are lighting up your environment, make sure that the shadows are matching the original footage. 
Now if you want your environment to cast shadows on your subject, you can select your subject, go to the shader editor, change this from the emission color to the base color and turn the strength for the emission to zero. And now the environment will cast shadows on your subject. Our footage is a bit darker now. To fix that, you can press Shift A on your keyboard and create RGB curves node and plug it between the base color and the image sequence and turn up the brightness from there. And now I will complete the environment. Now if you are enjoying this video and learn something new, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. Once you are done creating the environment, make sure the subject is not clipping through the ground, especially the feet and that the shadows are matching up. Now to create some volumetric haze, shift A on your keyboard to create a cube, scale it up so it covers your whole scene. Go to the shader editor, create a new material for it, delete the principal BSDF and add a volume scatter node. Select the volume into volume and I will turn down the density a lot. Now I will select the camera, go into the camera settings and turn on depth of field. Now let's create a new empty and place it on the subject's head. Then select the empty, shift select the subject, control P on your keyboard to parent it. Select your camera, go back to the camera settings and select the empty as the focus object. If you want to render out the mist pass for this as well, go up here, change this to mist, select on your layers and turn on mist pass. Now go to the world properties, go to mist pass and adjust this to your liking. Now to render this, go up here to the scene layers, select the background, click on this little cross to delete the layer. Now go into the compositing tab and delete everything. Shift A on your keyboard, create a file output and then render layers. Now if you want to render this as a PNG sequence, you can set it up here and go into the compositing tab, select your file output and click on reset node. You can click on add input image, name one of them combined and change the other to mist. Plug the mist into the second output. But if you want to export this as an EXR, you can select that from here, go back into the compositing, reset node, add input image and do the same go up to render and render animation when I'm done rendering out my scene I will go back to blender and I will render out my subject separately with an alpha to do that I will go up here and turn on the mask out option for the collections and mask out every collection except the collection which my subject is in then I will go into the render settings and under film I will turn on transparent when you use the mask out option on an object it will use the object as a mask just like this. Once you are done with the rendering, go into After Effects, import everything, place them in your composition. Now how do we use the mist pass? Import any fog layer. If you change the scale, make sure to pre-compose it. Now select your fog layer and add a gradient vibe effect to it and change the gradient layer to mist pass. If we increase or decrease this, it will create nice mist in our scene. Now if this is too strong for you, you can add a curves effect change this to alpha and turn it down a bit. Now this is why I exported the subject separately. If your subject is not matching with the background, change this from RGB to red, add a levels effect on your subject and in the levels effects also change it to red. Now in each of the channels make sure that the subject and the backgrounds are matching in lightness and darkness. Now if this effect is too strong for you, what you can do is click on your levels effect, Control c on your keyboard to copy it, duplicate your subject layer create a new level effect on it and make it full bright and then pre-compose it. Create a new adjustment layer and use the track matte option on the subject matte we created. Paste the level effect on your adjustment layer and now you can control the opacity. After you are done with color grading and matching everything up, to tie everything together, we will add film grain on top of it. Make sure that it is subtle and not too much. To easily add black bars onto your footage, Create a new black solid in After Effects and add the CC Jaws effect to it. Change the completion to 75% and turn the height to zero. So if you want more tutorials like this or any other specific tutorial, do let me know in the comments down below. Also make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And in the meantime, if you want to learn how to make realistic Wings VFX in Blender, 
you can watch this video.